book that Brad was in. Back in the sequel, when you get a chance to work with people that you got to work with, you see I like that. I In the fall of 2000, Left Behind the Movie took the public by storm. This film, based on the first book of the phenomenally popular best-selling series by Tim LaHaye and Jerry B. Jenkins, was the sleeper hit of the year and gained international acclaim. This apocalyptic end times thriller based on the book of Revelation depicts the rapture, the first sign of the fulfillment of end time prophecy. Left Behind is filled with vivid images of the rapture and the chaos that occurs as millions of people around the world simply disappear. It also introduces us to a memorable cast of characters such as Buck Williams, Chloe and Rayford Steele, Pastor Bruce Barnes, Hattie Durham, and of course, the Antichrist himself, Nikolai Carpathia. Left Behind the movie focuses on the rapture and its immediate aftermath, and Tribulation Force picks up one week later. Hello, I'm Bob Carlisle, and welcome to a look behind the scenes of Left Behind 2, Tribulation Force. During this program, you'll learn more about this exciting sequel and its journey from page to screen. We'll hear from many of the people working behind the scenes, as well as all your favorite stars. I think the challenge of dramatizing this for a group of people who are maybe not necessarily the choir that we're preaching to in terms of the Christians, but but other people who will enjoy this as a piece of, of good storytelling. Um, and that really has been my focus throughout this thing because it's not, there's no challenge for in, in reiterating the story simply as it is in the book unless I can reach and touch other people and have other people go, gee whiz, you know, the Bible is a pretty exciting source of stories. It's an exciting place to be and maybe I can use that as a vehicle for creating better and, and more meaningful stories for people. People keep asking, oh, how is Left Behind compared to Tribulation Force or vice versa? And it's such a difficult question to answer. You think, oh, it's a sequel, it's gonna be exactly the same, just the same sort of story, and it's not. Left Behind dealt with these huge climatic events on a very large world scale. Tribulation Force deals with that scale, but it's much more a personal story. It's much more concentrated on characters. And really, you know, anyone has amazing stories. And these are great stories of people in heroic circumstances. And so we wanted to get to the heart of the characters and to really look at their personal struggles and to look at how that affects them and the world around them and what four small people in the grand scheme of things can do on a world stage. And so in that way, I think, Tribulation Force is much more powerful, it's much more personal, it's much more intimate, yet still has those great moments. You know, a large part of the appeal of the Left Behind book series has been its characters. The incredible cast of Left Behind the movie brought these characters to life on the big screen. Fortunately, they were all eager to return for the sequel. On Left Behind the movie, uh, it was a very challenging shoot. And so the cast really had to pull together and, and work hard to pull off what we were trying to pull off. And so we got to be pretty close and we got to, to, to work together very well. And so I was hoping that the whole cast would come back. And that was one of the main factors that uh, really closed the whole deal for me, uh, knowing that the cast would be strong and that we'd be able to, to build on what we had already started in the first movie. I think it, it helps for the fans, you know, to see you know, the same faces, because it was hard enough for the fans to go from the book and have these characters in their mind, and then, you know, to say, okay, these are the characters, and then if you were to switch them all up again, I think that would be really, uh, really rough on the fans, so. It's like making super stew. Everybody is, you know, is a different ingredient, and it really adds, adds some spice in their own way to it. It was fun seeing everybody. I come from so much series work, so uh, I like that element that family element. I chose to come back for the sequel um, be, for the same reasons I chose to do Left Behind, really. Um, it was a good script and um, I, I like the character of Hattie and um, I was excited about the cast coming back, the original cast coming back and um, for the same reason I also like the book. So you, you get involved in the story, you get involved with the characters and you want to see 
what happens next. And so it was fun to um, continue continue the story. I think the most challenging aspect of filming Tribulation Force and bringing it to life is bringing the characters to life. This is a movie that is based upon these characters going through incredible traumatic experiences. And to bring that off without, you know, having a book to say this is what they're thinking inside their heads is very difficult. It's one of the reasons that we chose Bill Corcoran because he works very well with actors. He works extremely well with bringing out the inner conflicts, the inner uh, idiosyncrasies of the character and making it seem very honest and very real so that everyone will say yes this feels like a real character. I'm very lucky in that I've been in the film business for a few years and I've got a lot of very trusted people around me, people like Michael Story the cameraman and Harold Thrasher the designer. So they were key in me pulling together a team of people to make this movie, to understand um, the necessary respect that we all have for the material the respect that we needed to give the actors for their performances and for creating a vision in the movie that was a uh, post-apocalyptic vision um, but provided with a Christian base and a kind of struggle by our tribulation force to fight against the, what was going on or what is going on in our movie. Finding the right locations and creating realistic sets were an important part of helping to achieve this dark and frightening vision of the world after the rapture. Tribulation Force, like Left Behind, was filmed entirely on location in Toronto, Canada, which presented some interesting challenges for both the location manager and the set designer. The basic need is you break down geography in the show. Uh, and most of this takes place in Chicago. Uh, it's all present day. Uh, some of it is uh, centered in New York, around the UN. And the big problem piece in the production is Jerusalem and the Wailing Wall and the Temple Mount. And uh, those are things that you end up having to treat totally differently than you're treating the rest of the picture. Harold um, and I went through the script, and one of the amazing delights all the time with somebody like Harold is I showed him a picture this big in a, in a book that I bought and said, what do you think, Harold, could we make this? And he said, yeah, sure, no problem. And he made the uh, wailing wall out of that picture. One of the big elements we had to include, uh, well, obviously, is the wailing wall. Uh, and the thing that fascinated me about it was this, this plants, weeds that grow out of it for reasons I don't understand. And looking over 15 years of research on the wailing wall, different pictures taken at different times, uh, the same plants are always there. Uh, so that'd be kind, kind of a giggle to fit those in because it was something that marks it as a distinct place. It just uh, kept growing and mushrooming and getting bigger and better every time I looked at it. It's almost unbelievable to me that you can take a little photograph and six weeks later it's built in a studio. We had 20-foot ceilings and a 95-foot wall. And when we uh, put in the green screen and finish doing all of our work with it, it will look like the Wailing Wall. Uh, uh, there was another picture that we stumbled across, also from one of Bill's books, I think, uh, which was of the steps going up to the Temple Mount. The Temple Mount scene originally was written as a scene that took place in the foyer of a hotel in Israel. And I just said, gee whiz, we can't have this film be a claustrophobic, closed-in film. We have to open it up. We have to find something that publicly says this is an important, maybe the most important event in the film. I wanted to set it in some place that had both a spiritual and a geographic and physical um, resonance for the people who will watch this film, but for the whole world. We all know what is going on in Jerusalem at this point in time, and it was a terrific opportunity to build something, to know that we could layer it with green screen and later put in the Temple Mount itself, perhaps a piece of Israel uh, and Jerusalem characters in there, and then to turn around on the other angle and make our group of 500 people look like five or 10,000 people, again by using green screen techniques that I've used before to multiply the masses and the crowd and make it look like a much bigger scene, um, therefore giving it hopefully much more weight, much more scope in doing it. Action, suspense, and special effects are important elements of a great end times thriller. And Tribulation Force pulls out all the stops. In addition to the cutting edge computer technology that makes us believe we're actually in Israel, 
The clever special effects team creates some heart-stopping action scenes guaranteed to keep you on the edge of your seat. So tonight on Tribulation Force, the scene is somewhat of an apocalyptic scene. Uh, we were required by production to help enhance that effect by using wet downs, uh, flame barrels, which are propane-powered flame rigs. Uh, we have flame bars inside the vehicles to give the, achieve the burned out look, the chaotic type look. Um, we had some gentlemen stunt people portraying looters. They were breaking into a couple vehicles. We, they were getting shot by a security force. We rigged them up with a uh, device we call squibs. They're explosive devices strapped to the stunt person's body. We trigger them in time with uh, the action and what the director wants. Uh, we also had some knockers on the glass windows, so when they went to hit the windows, these knockers were fired in the time with them smacking the windows to help achieve that shatter look. One of my other favorite scenes in this movie is uh, at the very end of the movie where Rabbi Ben Judah finally gets to come face to face with the two witnesses at the Wailing Wall in Jerusalem. So Buck determines to bring Ben Judah to the Wailing Wall, and they get there, they break in, they sneak in at night. It's very dark, it's very creepy, atmospheric. And um, while they're there talking to the witnesses, a couple of Nikolai's uh, soldiers attack the witnesses and attempt to kill them with machine guns, and the witnesses call down fire on, uh, on these attackers, and they explode into flame. You know what, I always count on these guys to bring me some new and interesting stuff. And it's not that so much that the gags are particularly difficult, it's the way they incorporate them. Originally, we were going to ignite the two uh, stunters with a propane cannon, a device that ejects propane, creates a flame ball, and that was going to be used as the source of ignition for the stunters. One of the authorities in town uh, had concerns about us using propane cannons to, to ignite the stunters. You, you understand that in this sequence, uh, our two characters breathe fire and use those to uh, uh, debilitate the two stuntmen or the two gentlemen with, shut with uh, gu machine guns. Um, so what we're doing now is this. Against black, we're going to shoot a post-visual element. Uh, it'll be a piece that we'll give to the post department to use to marry together to help simulate that effect. Body burns are probably one of the most extreme stunts that uh, a special effects coordinator ever gets involved with. Uh, it requires the involvement of a number of different departments. Seeing people on fire alone is really just scary enough. So bringing that to life and bringing it to camera takes a lot of work. I was watching the day when they were burn lighting the, um, the uh, when the witnesses were calling down fire upon their attackers and they were exploding into flame, uh, which is a from the Bible, straight out of the Revelation. And Kirk um, Cameron came by and he was really excited. And I said, Kirk, what's going on? He goes, look at what we're doing. Look at how cool this is. We're actually making something that the Bible predicts is going to happen. So this is, look how amazing this is. And it was that sort of enthusiasm is what's carried over, I think, into everybody here and, and really made this movie a lot of fun to be on. The soundtrack album and the music tour for Left Behind the Movie were a great success. And with Left Behind 2, Tribulation Force, we're taking things a step further. The Butterfly Group, a company formed by yours truly and my partners George King and Michael Rinaldi, will be producing four soundtracks this time inspired by the movie. There will be a contemporary gospel album, a southern gospel album, an urban gospel album, and an urban hip-hop album. So it really looks like we have our work cut out for us this time. We're having original songs written, and then we're taking those songs to uh, the biggest artists in Christian music and allowing these brand new songs to be sung by these people. And, and this will be the only place you can get those songs is on the soundtrack albums. Not only will many well-known Christian artists be appearing on the soundtracks, a few actually appear in the movie. Well, uh, this time around, uh, Abby, Jennifer Abby, uh, is appearing in the film, and Jennifer's a brand new artist on Christian Records, and uh, she is a, a incredible singer, great personality. She lights up the room, and uh, her first record will be out after the first of the year. I love working with these people, and everybody's so friendly and and happy, and I think everybody's on the same page as far as what they're doing and having a purpose behind the whole film, which is incredible. So it's been fun. And then we have Grammy Award winner Bob Carlisle. You guys know him as the Butterfly Boy. And uh, Bob's going to be uh, in the movie. Hopefully he'll get one line. Maybe not the last time he got to say, That's our book. In this film, I was convinced that it would be even more powerful if I didn't have a line at all. What I do is I sit on a, on a news panel on a, a GNN, if you will, all 24-hour news show with three other people. and. 
as part of a discussion, but I don't really discuss. I react, my eyebrows will go up, I will sip my coffee. And I felt like this was probably my most memorable performance to date. I'm sure you'll agree, all of you. And we'll talk about that and some other things when we'll be back. Good work there, Bob. Thank you very much, it's the whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, Bob, you were truly impressive once again. My role in the film, though not as critical as Bob's, is still quite important to the plot. My character doesn't have a name, so we'll call him Photographer 2. Now, I know you'll be able to spot me in the crowd of reporters at the United Nations. I really stand out. See, I have this effervescent glow of an up-and-coming actor with no lines, <laughs> about to have my first five minutes of fame. Russ Lee has, has had 17 number one songs. Uh, it's his first time to be involved in a movie. Uh, his travel schedule is probably one of the uh, most gifted and sought after artists, artists in the States as far as uh, um, a guy that can deliver the message of the gospel and also just flat out sing. <laughs> He's an incredible singer. I'll have to remember to thank George for those kind words. But I noticed he didn't say much about my acting capabilities. I guess he's still in awe. There are also a number of other people appearing for the first time in a feature film, the extras. Now, extras are an important part of creating realism and scope in a film. And the extras in Tribulation Force not only added realism, they're also some of the movie's biggest fans. One of the great things about working on a movie like this is that you get people believing in it so passionately and so enthusiastically. And I think the greatest testament to that have been the extras. They just want to be there for the movie, for the movie experience, and they're so excited and so pleased to be bringing this sort of movie to the general public. We watched Left Behind, and um, we knew what it was all about, and so we thought it would be an interesting experience. We both believe in, in uh, this kind of uh, faith or action and we would like to be part of it uh, as, a, as something we believe in, actually. As an actor, you get so much energy. I mean, there's 600 people, which eventually through movie magic is going to be made into thousands and thousands. Um, but that's 600 people, and it's, I mean, it's a fairly large studio, but it's still a fairly condensed group of people. That's a lot of energy and a lot of people smiling, a lot of eyes, a lot of cameras. Um, and it basically, I think it really fed me. It, as, as an actor, and their enthusiasm you can certainly feel here in the room. So it was, it was nice. In addition to the Temple Mount scenes, there were a number of extras required for the scenes that took place at New Hope Church. It was a great turnout, and their enthusiasm for the project was contagious, which is amazing considering they were there until four in the morning. These people, they came here and they volunteered their time. They, I'm talking from 8 o'clock p.m. to 4 o'clock a.m. on a long weekend. And note the word volunteer, they want to be a part of history. That night was a really special night when uh, so many people came to be part of, of Trib Force. A lot of people volunteered to be there and they gave their time and, and uh, all their energy to be part of that scene and reminded us of how many people really love this story. Uh, and it's just great to, to be part of a production where so many people are really into into what they're doing, even if they're not getting paid for it. Well, we had a lot of fun the first time around. It was two years, almost to the you know day. It was I think it was in May of 2000 that uh, WCTL in Erie, Pennsylvania. Uh, we brought some listeners with us to be extras and left behind. Had a wonderful time, and so they had a lot of fun. So now here it is for Tribulation Force. We brought some more listeners up. They're having a great time getting to meet some of the stars like Kirk Cameron and others, and we're just having a wonderful time. Well, the scene has taken place in in the church, and it's a, a situation where there's a, a reuniting of uh, individuals, and they're very happy to uh, see each other. The whole thing has been very, very uplifting. And uh, the choir was magnificent, and I found everyone in the, uh, in the pews were singing right along, and it was very exciting. I have loved the choir scenes. They've been amazing. Uh, you just uh, feel the presence of God in the house, and uh, the choir has such fabulous voices, and the message behind it is just so uplifting that I just love being a part of it. It's just so much fun. All the assistant directors came up to me later and said, gee, I wish we could have extras like this all the time because they listened, they reacted to the material, they uh, were very good about waiting, being in place when they had to be there and, and relating to each other. So it really was, uh, they were a wonderful group to work with and, and very, very easy to deal with. 
on every movie set you really hope for these great movie moments of magic and with Dave McNiven he plays the character of Chris he had to somehow exude this great joyous feeling at the very end of the movie and sing this amazing hymn the problem is he didn't know the words and we didn't have a, a choir there to sing along with him. As the camera starts rolling, all of a sudden we hear this great deep bass voice start singing and it's Mark Bradley Morrow. He's a uh, DJ from Erie, Pennsylvania and he just felt the spirit move within him and he had to sing this hymn and he starts singing along and you could just see the genuine joy show up on Dave McNiven's face and he just starts picking along, the chorus comes up and he's singing along with everyone else and the rest of the, the rest of the, all the extras join in and you just feel the goosebumps running up your arm. The camera stopped rolling, David gets up, comes over, you saved me man, you saved me and he gives him a big handshake and it was just a great moment. The Left Behind book series by Tim LaHaye and Jerry B. Jenkins is one of the most successful book series of the 21st century. And the Left Behind movies have created the same loyal following. These end times prophecy books and films are almost unprecedented in their popularity and have broken down the conventional boundaries between Christian and non-Christian audiences around the world. I think the Left Behind series of books and of course the movies now are popular for a couple of things. There's a, there's obviously a terrific strong Christian message there but also people have been fascinated with the end times for as long as we've been around and wondering what's, what's going to be like and the Bible in Revelation predicts what that or prophesies what that world's going to be it tells us what that world's going to be it's, it's a subject that people are very interested in because of the reality that of the world that they live in right now and uh, we're just trying to bring those stories to life on film and there's always been an intrigue spiritually about what comes next. But I think is a heightened awareness and um, definitely a, a def an increase in people seeking answers and wanting to know to find some maybe comfort or um, just truth. I mean, it's the ultimate question. Where did we come from? Where are we going? Why are we here? So I think that's why it's always been intriguing to people. At the end of the movie, whether you're a Christian or a non-Christian, you're going to be wondering, you're going to be asking questions, you're going to be asking for more, and uh, we just always want to be there to help people with those questions, with those answers, and to show characters going through the tribal trials and tribulations that they may be going through. So if you're a Christian, and I am, uh, the Bible lays out for us what God says is going to happen in the end times. And one of the great things about this, this book series, and as well as the movies, is that I think it, it, it makes that information much easier to understand because it's personified in real people. You know, you've got Buck and Chloe, and these are real people going through what the scripture says are going to happen. And I think one of the services that the movie does for the Christian public is to allow us to see little snapshots of what that might be like. You know, it's a movie, so you have a little license, you know, but at the same time, you get to see this snapshot, and it, it should, at a minimum, I think it makes people think about wow, where am I, and what's going to happen to me, and what about my children, what about what my wife, and what about my husband, and am I really ready to face that future without God? Over the past few years, Peter and Paul Lalonde have set a new standard for Christian filmmaking by producing high-quality films that are not only entertaining, but have a meaningful message. With the Left Behind series, Cloud 10 Pictures has taken Christian filmmaking to a new level by bringing these much-loved books to life. Cloud 10's goal is to continue to produce Christian films that are as entertaining as anything Hollywood has to offer, but with a spiritual message that resonates with today's Christian audiences. Peter and Paul have obviously found there's a huge group of people who are underserviced by motion picture and television industry, people who uh, do not like the current themes of violence in television. Um, nor the kind of whimsical soap operas that they're looking for something that they can share with their families in terms of having real human values and certainly inspiring those values and, and looking at them in a Christian light um, is a huge new resource that has never really been um, looked at in television. I really feel comfortable working with Cloud 10 Pictures because of what they stand for. 
It is a company that has said, yes, we're going to make faith-based movies. These are movies that are unapologetically Christian. We're going to have Christian heroes. We're going to have characters that get through a great deal of problems and trials and all the hurts and angers that comes with being human. But we know that there's a greater truth, that there's a greater glory, and that there's a hope at the end of it. And if you can bring that hope and that joy to movie making, wow, what a great movie you have. What I'd like people to take away after seeing this film is, is the sense that you're never alone. You know, there's always somewhere you can turn, and even in your, you know, this sounds so scripted, but I mean it, even in your darkest moment, there's someone there to say, you know what, tomorrow's a new day, and, and you know, we can do this, and, and there's, there's never a sense that all is lost.